on the little exhortations. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, Amen. Father, this is your word. This is truth. People have continually attacked it and telling us it's not worth it. People nowadays have twisted it. People have made their own Bibles. People are trying to defeat the core message of turning to Christ to be saved. But we hold to that and we ask you to hold us together in that as we explore again the minds of, of the Spirit in the Word of God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be for all Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we're going to flip to Jesus' second coming. This is how it's going to happen. Is this exciting or what? So these are some of my favorite verses on the second coming. Now when Jesus comes, he's not coming alone. Amen? Now we've been talking a lot about being raptured up, being caught up in the air. So he says, Paul and Silvanus and Timothy. If you circle the word Silvanus there in verse 1. Silvanus means they're his secretary. So Paul did not necessarily write all these letters down. He did what? Dictated them. How many ever heard of the Gospel of Mark? You see all those and, 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 and. Doesn't that sound like a fourth grader? <coughs> when I teach the kids, I hear and, and, like, and, and. But the new one now is what? <laughs> did, did you ever hear them speak to you? Do you hear them speaking to you? Do they say what all the time? What? And I always tell them, I learned English last night. I spoke fluent Chinese, but now I'm up to English. I just learned. What? What? Okay. So, circle Silvanus and Timothy to the church of Thessalonians and God and Father our Lord Jesus. Circle the two words, verse 2. Those are the two words for the whole gospel. Grace. Can you earn grace? Can you earn grace? No. 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 Can you earn your salvation? No. no. So, when you get to heaven, it's through the merits of Jesus Christ. Yes, my dear. I thought the more um, you go to Mass, the more you receive all the sacraments, you get more grace. You get more grace, but did you give it? No, but you can get more. Of course. Yeah. Of course. You the, the more you have a yielded life to Christ, the more you get. Right. Amen? So you, can, you, can get you can't earn your salvation. Yeah, you, can still get more. you can't be good enough or Italian enough to get to heaven. <laughs> so if I can't earn salvation, you can. And grace is a gift. Yes. Then I'm toast. Either one way or the other. If I don't, if the grace I just got to step back. Go ahead. Go ahead. If the graces aren't given to me, no, you are if you, if you go for them. You can get extra by receiving the sacraments. You you got to celebrate uh, as Catholics the sacramental life. But you get them by yielding your life to Jesus, by obeying the word of God more and more, by praying more and more, you're getting more grace. And going to But you, you got to get off your Oaxaca. I'm not cursing you. Oaxaca? you got to get off your Oaxaca and say, I want to live, I want to live a, the, the grace of God. Amen? Oaxaca. You can't earn your way to heaven. Yeah. And all the funeral parlors around, they're just saying, oh, they're good enough. They're... You hear that all the time. Yeah. Oh, they're so good they're in heaven. I don't correct them. I don't correct them. I just scream. <laughs> I go out there and kick my tires on the car and everything else. <laughs> Next. All right, now circle those two words. Grace and peace. Grace is salvation. Peace is what you get when you receive grace. We are bound to give thanks to, to God. Underline give thanks, verse 3. What is, how do you say give thanks? Eucharistian. Eucharistian. Uh, always for you, brethren, as is fitting because your faith is growing abundantly. Isn't it great to know that your faith is growing abundantly? How do you have growing faith? Anybody want your faith to grow? Now, when you have growing faith, here's what you've got to say. You've got to use the faith that you got. But how many know you go to church and say you have faith, but you've got to practice it and don't cream anybody in the parking lot? You've got to use your faith in your speech. You've got to build people up. All those little commandments that we heard, all those exhortations of 1 Thessalonians 5, you've got to do that. And then your faith grows abundantly. How many would like to have a church where people's faith grow abundantly? Where they're really going out of themselves and really walking. So growing faith is faith that's used. Growing faith is faith that's used. What do I mean by that? Everybody here says you believe in God. But you don't... You, you, you don't have faith by watching TV all day long. 
<coughs> Amen? You've got to be engaged in the things of God. Then your faith can grow. When I, when I left the seminary, the Holy Spirit told me, I told you in the second year, uh, uh, and I got the date October 7th, 1979, the Holy Spirit said, if you're going to preach my word, you better know it. Because I love Fulton Sheen, I, I, I instantly I read 17 volumes that Fulton Sheen used. All 17 volumes. This way nobody can ever say to me, you don't know what you're talking about. Nobody ever said to me, in my whole, you don't know what you're talking about. Nobody has ever said that. Even on Resurrection Sunday, one kid says, Mom, keep away from Father Bill. He knows too much. <laughs> okay. So nobody has ever said, you don't know what you're talking about. I said, here's what God's Word says on, on the matter. So you want your faith to grow? It's got to be used. Now, here's the most important time when it's used. When you are ready to go to the other side. What do I mean by that? When you're ready to go back to the world. You've got to use your faith and say, I don't go that way. I don't do that. Mm -hmm. Then you're exercising your faith. And you're going to have to use your faith sooner or later. When you go to work, when you're with that interesting family, when you go down the shore and everything else, you've got to use your faith and say, we don't say that and we don't do that. How many think you could use your faith? Okay. And by the way, is it going to cost you to use your faith? Yeah, it is. So Paul is so thrilled with the Thessalonians. I think I want to visit Thessalonica. They were using their faith. What would happen if across the street we all used our faith? You would see by Christmas a different church. We all say we have it. But you know, when we start to complain, that's not faith. When we start to doubt, that's not faith. When we get worried, that's not faith. When we're so preoccupied with the world and its vanity, that's not faith. When we, we're so caught up in the shows and the entertainment more than God, that's not faith. When we use our machines and, and our programs more than praying our holy hour every day, that's not faith. How, how you, you're, the faith that you have is what you spend the most time with. Do you, do you know why people fight our faith? Because they're not spending any time in it. And what I've discovered is the people that don't have faith that grows, they don't understand it. I had two whippersnapper college type people said, oh, the Bible. And they said, one brilliant young lady says, I'm an agnostic. How many of they want to get me upset? I stay equal. And she said, she says, Besides, the God of the Old Testament is different from the God of the New Testament. All of a sudden, you know what came out of me? <laughs> and then she said, show me in the Bible of the Old Testament where God is love. Come right over here. All right, goodbye. Gone. Hosea. Psalm 89. Come back to me. I love you with an everlasting love. The Song of Songs. Love! It's the same God! Uh, they quickly ran out of the room. And they were instructing me how to vote. <laughs> Holy Spirit, get them. So how many here have growing abundantly? Now abundance, remember what abundance means? If you have growing faith, it means that you have so much that God has given you in you. Without faith, you can't what? Hebrews 12, listen to me. Without using your faith, you're not pleasing God. And if you don't use your faith, you're not on the way to heaven. Would you like to see that? All right, I'll show you. You're looking at me like what? Go with me to Hebrews 12. Is everybody using your faith? Without faith, it's impossible. Listen, without faith, it's impossible to please God. If you and I are not putting our faith into action, guess what? We're not doing it. Amen? 
If you look at verse 12, 12, 12. Therefore lift up your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet. That's faith. How do you say straight in the Bible? Orthos. Anybody ever hear that? The, verse 13. So that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Strive for peace with all men and for the holiness with... Uh, underline that right there, verse 14. The holiness out of which you will not see God. If you don't become holy, you're not going to heaven. How many of a lot of people wouldn't want to hear that? Holy means this. You, you are separated for God. Living your faith to say, I am for God. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Listen to me, everybody. This is your hour. You're going to have to make some decisions now. Jesus or the world? And most people are siding with the world. Our church condition in the United States is at the T level. Terrible. It's absolutely terrible what people believe. They go to the communion yesterday. Oh, and then they tell me what they believe. Don't tell me what you believe. Maybe they're saying to me, don't tell me what you believe. <laughs> and my job is to tell you what he says. So are you growing abundantly? Listen to what he says. Underline that verse there. If you don't have holiness, strive. Now, underline the word there, verse 14, strive. The word strive in Greek means agonize. How many know you just can't do this overnight? If you're agonizing over something, and right now, uh, right now in my life, I'm agonizing. I'm agonizing for the direction of where I'm walking. I'm agonizing over it. God hears from me 24-7, 365, 366 leap year, which is the year so I get another day to agonize. <laughs> yes? So it, this is the path. Are you on it? And I, I hear some of us, we dismiss, we don't believe that, we don't believe this. Whose God are you following? Your own? If you're following your own thoughts of what you think God is, you created your own God. And then guess what? This, the Bible is not your authority. When are you going to wake up and get into the Word of God? Amen? Amen. This is your authority. Where did you get those ideas from? Everybody asks, when I ask them a question, where did you get your authority? Well, I think this. I told you one kid comes out of high school. I get straight A's. I said, well, I'm happy for you. I didn't tell him so did I. But anyway, you know, uh, I'm happy for you. And he says, guess what? I'm an atheist. I said, oh, yeah? I met people like you. And he says, we, I said, how do we get here? Did God put us here? Oh, no. We came from an amoeba. <laughs> I said, you get straight A's and that's the answer I get? You come from an amoeba? I said, all right. Mr. Brilliance. Who put the amoeba there? Well, it, it was in the sparks and they blew up. Hey, who put the blue up there? <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. You're right. Good for you. I was ready to take him to, to mystic theology there. So how many here are living the abundant life? The faith life. By faith you're saved. Amen? Amen. Ephesians chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 8. And love every one of you for another love is increasing. So Paul is really thrilled because when he looked at the Thessalonica, everybody was loving. What does love mean? Remember, I, I was telling Brother Richard one day. I told you the story about a hundred times. One guy says, Father Bill, I got a problem with you. I got an issue with you. You got an issue with me? What's your issue, man? The issue is you don't preach on love. So guess what I did? One Sunday I preached on love. He said to me, after the sermon, don't ever preach on love again. Because <laughs> I told him what it meant. All right, now, do you love your wife? Do you love your husband? Yes. All right, she said yes very quickly. Okay, very quickly. <laughs> it means you'll lay down your life for him. Do you love the person next to you? You got to look at her. That means you're going to lay down your life for her. Do you love the person all the way in the back? Oh, she said, yeah, she loves you all the way back there, all right? And that means she's going to lay down her life for you. Does everybody, does everybody love like that? Yes. No. So now do you know why, why when you hear love, love, love all the time? Does anybody tell you what that, that's what it means? That you will lay down your life. And Brother Richard, Jesus says, Love your enemies. 
So Brother Richard's going to Syria and just giving everybody a hug over there. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's going to, and then, and then Brother Richard, Brother Richard's coming back with five refugees, and they're going to live with in Richard's house. And Brother Richard will show five refugees about his choo-choo trains. And this is really exciting, eh, amen. Okay, everybody excited? How many? How many think you love? Now Paul says. Your faith is growing. We just want, how many have a growing faith right here? And how many really love and it's increasing and increasing? What would happen across the street if we just love one another? How many here would like to know that I have, about 3,500 people go to church. How many would like to have 35 people love you like that? How many feel like, whoa. How, and how many know you would never run out early if you had 3,499 others that love me like that? Whoa. I said, you know what I was saying? We are family. <laughs> okay? I mean, if I knew everybody loved me like that, that's agape love. That's why Paul says it was increasing. How many would like to be in this community of Thessalonica? This, and by the way, this, it happened once. Is it ever going to happen again? When we start loving like this, nobody in our church will ever fall through the cracks. Amen? Then he says to us there, the love of everyone for you and others is increasing. Boy, what a church. Verse 4. Therefore we boast of you in the churches of God. So Paul would say, look at Thessalonica. Look at Thessalonica. Amen? Where did you go? 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 4. Oh, back to Thessalonians. We ourselves boast of you in the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith and all your persecutions. We walk through everything that they're throwing, life throwing at us. We've been persecuted. We stay in there strong. We're not carrying. We're not giving up. We're steadfast. We're strong. When I wheeled one lady in and I just prayed over her, she says, Jesus and Father Bill said, I'm okay. <laughs> Zoom! And she went for the operation. The, the tumor shrunk down and the, the doctor just lifted it out. He says, that was amazing. I told you. I told you. And, and then Paul goes on to say there, uh, and in afflictions which you are enduring, they're going in Thessalonica, they had to be, per are you going to follow Jesus or not? Now, let's come now to Jesus coming. Ready? This is how he's coming. Now, that's called the what? Do you remember the word? Parousia. Everybody say parousia. Some say parousia. Some say tomato. Some say tomato. Some say potato. Some say potato. Some say agape, some say agape. All right, now, here's the coming of the Lord. I, I, I love, by the way, this is, again, this is the most preached teaching in the entire New Testament. There's about 450 references to the second coming. How many times do you hear the second coming mentioned in church? Never. Never. Hardly. How many times do I like to preach it all day long? What would most people do if I preached it all day long? Stone me! <laughs> Uh, look at verse 5. This is the evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be worthy of the kingdom of God. Now, Jesus tells us in Matthew 5, verse 12, 13, 14, Jesus tells us, blessed are the persecuted, for theirs is the what? The kingdom of God. Now, if you have that faith of abundance, do you all have it? If you have that love that's increasing, do you all have it? You're going to be persecuted. If you're not persecuted, but this is a very serious question I'm asking you. If you're not persecuted for your faith in Jesus, where you work, where you live, you're not showing any. So if you go home and everybody just loves you and everything goes on, but when you go home and there's tension there, you're praying again. You got the rosaries in the bathroom. You got a Bible everywhere. And candles are lit. What are you doing with all these candles lit? You got be a fire in this place. Again, you're going to church. Didn't you have enough on Sunday? Again. Anybody ever hear such things before? One guy called me up. I told you, get my wife home. I said, why? To listen to you? I told him to run. Oh, I want my wife home. Well, what are you going to do with her? You taking her out for dinner? No. I'm watching TV and she sits in the kitchen. 
I thing. said, let me tell you, Kai, she's better off with me. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> he cursed at me. I said, look, I got me no speaker your English. You say that one more time, I hang up. I hang up. He said, you, goodbye. <laughs> he never called me up again, and I didn't send him a Christmas card. <laughs> Amen? Amen? I'm not going to tolerate that. I look at my family members, if they, uh, those were, said, we don't speak like that. Amen? They look at me, mm -hmm. and they walk away real quick. <laughs> so, what's going to happen? Paul says, Thessalonians, Middletonians. <laughs> I, I make up my own words as we go along. <laughs> If you live for Jesus, Israel? you're going to be persecuted. Welcome it. And that's a sign that you're, you which you are suffering. Since God deems it to repay the affliction with those who afflict you. Now listen. Isn't that good? You walk out. Everybody walk out of your house tomorrow. Walk out with a compass. Make my day. You afflict me, baby. Double back for you. And you know what? My father's not going to like it. My father's not going to lie. You afflict me. And by the way, you've got to understand this. When you get persecuted for Jesus, they're not after you. Some, some of you take it too personally. I get on the boat. Oh, did you hear what that about? We're in an affliction. Let's have an affliction party. I just got afflicted for Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I just got, we'll have a new hotline persecuted for Jesus hotline and brother Richard will run control center alright another one coming out oh, we just got another persecution right from Bible study here we go let's send it around persecuted persecuted and how many know all day long your phone would light up right everybody shake your head yes amen shake your head so when people afflict you, they're against Jesus in you. Many a per person I've seen in my 33 years, they came into a personal relationship with Jesus, and you know what the kids say? We want our old mother back. They want a mother that's rotten, that curses, that carries on, that lets them do whatever they want. They want that kind of mother back. What's wrong with that picture? They don't want a mother that's calm, that prays for them. They don't want a mother that goes to church. Amen? They want the old mother. What's wrong with that picture? And the husbands are just as bad. They want the old wife back. What happened to you? I thought you got a new hairdo, and now it's worse than I thought. <laughs> when you, what are they attacking? They're not, you're not attacking your wives. You're not attacking your mother. You're attacking Christ. Amen. And why? You know why you don't like it? Because you see yourself. You know why? If your wife comes in, going to church every day, and guess what you say? I don't do that. And you're making me feel what? Now remember I told you many times when we did the, the men? Remember? Marriage? Men always lead the way in faith. If men do not lead the way in faith, your marriage is in trouble. Men lead the way to church. Hmm. Men do it. Men don't take a holiday from God. Men lead the way. Amen? Amen. A lot of times I ask some of your sister, where's, the, where's, your, where's your husband? <coughs> Snoring. <laughs> the men lead the way. Amen? Amen? What are they attacking, sisters? Please understand. Keep loving your husband. Stay with them for 120 more years. But... They're not attacking you. They're attacking Christ. And they believe in God. But when you come out glowing in the dark. Right? Now here's what I want you to do when you go home. Hi honey. How are you? You want to say a prayer now? They run, don't they? And they call me up. What kind of Kool-Aid you serving in St. Mary's? <laughs> I've, been a, I've been accused of a Kool-Aid maker. <laughs> you know, they call me Father Jim Jones from Guyana. <laughs> so 
So what are they attacking? They're attacking, you're attacking man, Jesus Christ. You don't like somebody in your family going to God because you were raised this way. Go to church on Sunday. Raise your kids. Send them to Catholic school if you can afford it. And guess what? You never taught them. You never prayed with them. You never mentioned the Bible. You didn't have family devotions. So all of a sudden, when your wife gets hit with the power of the Holy Spirit, and you're like, can we be normal? That is normal. You're living an abnormal pagan life. Is your whole family on the way to heaven right now? Well, not to make anybody feel guilty. You better do something about it. What do I do, Father Bill? You need to pray fast. You need to get with your wife and get on your knees for them. Amen? And I'll come in and take three tons of holy water and sprinkle the rooms. Wow! You got to start fighting for your kids. Amen? Are you doing it? You got to get them in the kingdom. Are you doing it? So, does everybody understand Paul saying, Thessalonians, your problem is they're not after you. They're after Christ. Amen? Amen. And you got a, you got a decision. Am I giving him up and going with you? By the way, there's nothing to go over there. Next he says there, underline verse 7, to grant rest with you who are afflicted. Now, what's going to happen? Anybody who hurts me, God's going to deal with you. Make my day. Okay? So number one, when Jesus comes, all the attacks against us are going to be dealt with. Okay? All the attacks. So number one, all the attacks are going to be dealt with. Everyone who attacked me because of my faith. And by the way, remember what Jesus says to us. You deny me in front of people. And some of you men are denying Jesus right in your own home. Do not deny him. Do not deny him. And some of these politicians are denying, I won't mention any names, are denying Jesus publicly. Amen? Do not deny him. Especially publicly. You deny me, Jesus will say to you one day, I don't know who you are. But you announce Christ. You'll be known in front of the Father and all the angels. Can you imagine the angels clapping when you get in? I don't know how they're going to do it. They don't have hands. But anyway, I don't know how they're going to do it. <laughs> Since indeed God, verse 6, deems it necessary to repay with affliction those who afflict you. So guess what's going to happen? Everybody who attacks me. Now, I don't wish evil on anybody. That's not who we are. But you attack me for my faith in Jesus Christ. God's going to deal with you. How many ever seen that bumper sticker? I hope my kids get double what they gave me with their kids. <laughs> That's not nice. I don't have it on my car, by the way, you know? You never seen that bumper sticker? No. Get, you, I, I wish you get double for what you want from me. Wow. <laughs> Look at verse 7. To grant with those who are afflicted, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. All right, now, when he comes. Oh, this is good. This is drama. Music, please. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> He's going to be revealed. Now, how is he going to be revealed? This is the revelation. How do you say revelation in, in the Bible? Apocalypse. Apocalypse. This is the revelation of Jesus. Now remember, Jesus never comes by himself, right? Did we discuss that? Yes. Can he? Of course. Allegedly, Mother Angelica saw him a lot. You know why? I mean, when you pray five hours a day, it helps. Okay? When he comes, he comes with angels. What's going to happen when he comes? If you look at Revelation chapter 1, verse 6, 7, and 8, when Jesus comes, he's coming for everybody to see him. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. Everybody's going to see him. You're gonna, you and I are going to walk out. It could be in our lifetime and say, it's over. You have no more bills to pay. Yes. <coughs> no more earthly worries. Yes. But what are you going to do in that instant when he's there? Are you known by him? Do you know him? As John 10 says, do you know his voice? Because I was sharing with people yesterday, and Saturday night, the only part of Jesus that didn't die on the cross was his voice. The voice never dies. That's how Mary Magdalene said, when he said, Mary. In Hebrew, he would have said, Miriam. And then she says, because she couldn't see him in his new form, he said, you're alive. Because that's that voice. That voice. It's the voice 
that you could see. Revelation chapter 1, verse 12. So now when he comes, Jesus is coming. He's coming with angels. Never alone. Now, thirdly, when he comes, he's coming in fire. Why is he coming in fire? How do you say fire in Greek? Per. He's coming with pur. Can you imagine this now? On a cloud, Revelation 1, 6, 7, and 8. He's coming with angels. They're around him. And then you're going to see massive fire. Does that remind you of something? <clears throat> Anybody remember the story of the Exodus when they were leaving the clutches? What time is it going to be? They left at what? Nighttime. When did the angel of death come and knock them all out? Nighttime. When did Jesus rise from the dead? Nighttime. Because when the ladies got there at, at, at 5 a.m., he was already out. Because he had, Jesus had to beat the sun out because he's greater than the sun, S-U-N. Are you getting this? And so what are we going to see when he comes? Fire. You're going to look up. He's going to say, Brother Richard. He's coming with angels. Wow. Now who are going to be there? How many choirs of angels are there? There's nine. What's the top angels? The seraphim, Isaiah 6. And by the way, who are the angels, the seraphim? Does everybody remember what seraphim means? Isaiah 6? Burning. Burning ones. So who do you think he's going to be coming with? Burning ones. Can you see them all coming? Because what are, they, what are the seraphim doing right now at this second? They're worshiping God right now. And guess what we're going to see? We're going to see fire. The exodus. How do they get out? Cloud by day, fire by night. Are you getting this? You got the image? How many think that's going to be awesome? And CNN will go, ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program for the second coming. Do not panic. Just look up. Look up. Okay? And then comes with fire, because the fur and the fire is, in the book of Deuteronomy 5, the fire is how God made his appearance. When you read the Exodus, when God reveals, what are we just talking about? Revelation. When God reveals, what's the first time that God revealed himself and started talking? The burning bush. Are you, are you doing some connections? So what are we going to see when we look up? Jesus. Now, how, how are you going to see Jesus? You're going to see the what? The marks. John 20. He's the risen Lord. You can see his side. You're going to see his feet. You're going to see the fire because he's coming out of the fire. When Moses was going up that little Mount Sinai, Moses was supposed to be invited, Exodus 3, verse 2 and 3, into the fire. When did we get the fire when we had Pentecost on us? How many ever had an experience of Pentecost? A real experience of the Holy Spirit of Pentecost. Anybody ever have that kind of experience? The really fire of God within you. Amen? When you are, you know, one, kid, one guy says to me, Father Bill, man, you're lit. <laughs> you are so lit. <laughs> you're lit that you're fit. You're lit. You're lit. <laughs> You know, man, don't miss with Father Bill, man. He's lit. Now, you might think lit the other way. You know, you're lit. You know, I've been around some people, you, if you light a, a match, they'll blow up. But when you got the fire, so when he comes, did everybody see all the background? Aren't you excited? That is pretty cool. That's why I go around Milton. Please come, please come, please come. <laughs> now, I didn't want to go to the hospital that some of you forced me to go to. <coughs> now I'm getting all the bills. <laughs> and I got threatened today. You better pay this bill. It's a little bill. You better pay this bill by May 1st or we're coming after you. I said, oh, give me a break. <laughs> it's a little piddly bill, you know. I said, I didn't want to go there. I mean, we had this, this nurse uh, trying to tell me that I'm going to die any second and everything else. Oh, my. 
So you got to be lit with the fire. Amen. How do you say fire in Greek? Prayer. Prayer. Are you excited about Jesus coming? Yes. What do you think? Yes. Do you think it's good? Yeah. Brother John, you think it's good? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> now you know why I like to preach more than five minutes on Sunday. Oh, this is good. Now, now here's the part you don't want to hear. This is the part we're going to skip in church because nobody, we don't want to upset anybody. Jesus revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire. Look at verse 8. Inflicting vengeance upon those who do not know God. Whoa. So what do you got to do to see this? You got to know God. Amen? Now Paul says, let me show you, because I want to be official here, baby cakes. If you go with me to Romans 1, those who don't know God, can they be saved? You keep asking me that question, right? Yes. All right, here's your answer. Can, yes. can we get it right from the, right from the Bible? Will that, will that satisfy you? Got to blow the test off. Go with me to Romans. Who wrote Romans? Paul. Paul, very good. Now, God's going to do what on, on that day? Afflict what? Vengeance. Now, should you ever seek vengeance? No. No. Vengeance is mine, say it to what? Lord. Okay, good, you know that Bible. Now, if you go with me, let me show you, you keep asking this question. If you go down to verse 18, Romans chapter 1, verse 18, vengeance is mine, say it to the Lord, so you should never, ever, ever, ever seek vengeance. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. 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 Even when we sent Richard to Syria for a while, <laughs> to love, it, love all the people there and give more hugs. For the wrath of God, is revealed. Oh, 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 oh. Now, in drawing connection, this is the full apocalypse of Jesus. Now, Jesus came in Bethlehem. Do you remember that? Jesus died on Calvary. Do you remember that? Jesus rose from the dead. Do you remember that spot? Do you remember Olives, where we were, Mount Olives, when we were in that cave? What do you... Oh, do you remember that? But this is when, on that day, and nobody wants to tell you this. It's never going to be preached. I guarantee you're never going to hear this. But I'm telling you. Amen? Amen. Does your Bible say the same thing? Am I making this up? For the wrath of God is revealed. See, they revealed from heaven. Whoa. Oh, God's love. 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 Pussy willows. Balloons. Are you reading the same scripture I am? Yes. Revelate, uh, uh, Romans 1, verse 18. Are you with me? All right, we're going to answer that. Age. For the wrath of God is revealed from, from where? Heaven. Heaven. Oh. Oh. I, I like the pussy willow, the church of nice. Nice. Everything's got to be nice. Comfortable, nice. Can I tell you why we're losing a lot of people? Because we're too nice. And people are really sick spiritually, and we just tell them to be nice. Does that heal them? No. No. Hmm. Just my observation. With all, against all ungodliness. Against all ungodliness. So I think I'm moving to Kansas soon. Get away from New York City as far as possible. I'll be with Dorothy and Toto. <laughs> Amen. Uh, and, and wickedness of men who by their wickedness suppress the truth. I don't want to hear it. You talk about God. I don't want to hear it. Keep religion on Sunday. I don't want to hear it. You're going to church again. I don't want to hear it. What are they doing? Suppressing the truth. Don't want to hear it. Anybody know what I'm talking about yet? Is this making sense? <coughs> Now, everybody underline this. You always ask them this question. How about those who've never heard the gospel? Here's your answer. I didn't write this book, you know. <laughs> For what can be known about God is plain to them. Hello? What they can know about God is plain to them. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Because God has shown it to them. What do you mean he has shown it to them? What's the first thing you learn if you want to become a Christian? The very first thing, if you go to Catholic catechism. What's the very first thing you, when you grew up? Who made you? Remember that question? Anybody remember Baltimore days? Yes. Who made you? You talked about, the first thing we all talked about was we were created. All right, now how can somebody who has never heard the gospel be saved? 
What do they got to say? Look at creation. Doing a Thomas Aquinas moment. Who put that there? That sun up there. Who put that there? That, that tree. So what did I say if I never heard? I got to start thinking in my mind. <coughs> something else put it there. So what, is, what does Paul say there? For God has shown it to them. Ever since the creation... See the word? See the word? See the word? Ever since the creation of the world, his invisible nature, namely his eternal power and deity, has been clearly perceived in all the things that have been made. Wow. So how are those who have never heard the gospel going to be saved? They look at creation. Now, how many here have ever said, I think last week I heard almost everybody say, boy, it's a beautiful day today. It was warm, blue skies. How many ever say, it's really beautiful? And what were you saying, because you're a believer, Look what God has done. So things were perceived around you in your own senses. And I've been out to Wyoming and, I, you know, I've seen the picture that they put on calendars, the, the snow-capped mountains and the beautiful flowers in the field. And, but when you really walk in it for your first time, I'm like, this is really beautiful. Mm. I've been in Vermont when all the leaves changed in the peak season. And you know what I wanted to do, which I never wanted to do before besides stare at my trains? What I wanted to do is I wanted to stare at creation. Mm -hmm. And you know what I kept saying? God, you're beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God is good. And so do you understand what's going on in every human being? Mm -hmm. So what is God... <coughs> now you and I are blessed men and women because we hear the truth. We hear it explained to us. But how about those who have never... They look outside. When you see a rainbow, say, that's really beautiful. Yeah. And then they start saying, who are you? Yeah. And as soon as they start saying... Who are you? God will reveal them. Now, here's the tricky part. They can't deny their own senses of what they say. <coughs> when they deny their own senses, they'll say, um, I don't want to ask who you are, and I believe you're there, but I don't want to acknowledge that you're there. Even though this is really beautiful. Like my atheistic friends. Mm -hmm. So what are they doing? Suppressing the truth and saying, I don't know you. And Jesus is going to say, you don't know me, I don't know you. And then go on with me. Now, what's creation supposed to do? Does this make sense to you? Mm -hmm. This is asking your question, Brother Richard, who can be saved. Yes. Then he says there, they perceived in the, the things that have been made. They are without excuse. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so when everybody dies, you know what I say? They're without excuse. You and I see creation, and number two, you and I have it hopefully explained to us. So we are really blessed people in this room, aren't we? Next he says there, for although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. Now did you notice, if you studied human history, did you notice we built things of creation? The Egyptians, cats, 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 cats. I don't mean the show in New York. Cats. I remember that all the mythologies. What did you see there? Animals. Animals. They, they did have some canine representations. And when Ruth was, remember Ruth in the Bible? She, she went to a place called Moab. And you know what? You know what they had to worship? You thought, we're well, weird today. They worshipped a bug. The name of the bug was called Kamosh. Everybody bow down. Bug Kamosh is here. Worship the bug. <laughs> And if you, have, you may laugh, but you may have Hindu friends. You go to their house, they worship an elephant. And, and that's why they, they and that's why they, that elephant stands on one foot and does a little jigger up, up in the air. They worship that dude. Amen? That's called paganism. And they're building that monstrosity in New York City in a few weeks. You can't make this stuff up. Now, what happens in verse 21? They give thanks to them, but they became futile in their thinking, and their senseless minds were darkened. Claiming to be wise, how many, how many are claiming to be wise? Say verse 22. They became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man, or birds, or animals, cats, or reptiles. Therefore God gave them up to the lust of their heart of their impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves. What are, you, what are people doing with their body? Paint it. Stamp it. 
dishonor and because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature. Because when you worship creation, what are you going to say? I've got to stamp myself with something. This is the dawning of the... Remember those days? Age of Aquarius. Remember those days? Da, na, 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 na. Give peace a chance. Remember those days? You forgot those days. Richard, you were really wild in those days, I'll tell you. And they receive in their own persons their due penalty. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, if you don't acknowledge God, God gave them up to their base mind. Now, if you don't acknowledge God, what's going to happen to your mind? You're going, to go, you're going to live in your thoughts. How many would like to live in your thoughts? Some of them are wild. Improper conduct. How many have seen some improper conduct going on? And then he says that they were filled with all manner of wickedness, evil, covetousness, malice, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malignity. They are gossip, slanders, haters of God. I hate God. <coughs> Insolent, haughty, their noses up in the air, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to their parents. How many have ever seen that one? Foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. They know God's decree, but those who do such things deserve to die. They did not only do them, but approve those who practice them. Everybody, let's do it. Welcome to... How many of that page in Romans is today's world? Now when Jesus comes, we'll continue, Lord willing, next week we're just getting started. He's coming. The full revelation is coming. He's coming with angels. He's coming with fire. And then... We're going to see the wrath of God against those who do not know God. Dot, dot, dot. Stay tuned. Next week. Good stuff. Were you inspired or expired today? Father, we just... Does everybody know Jesus, your Lord and Savior here? Yes. Do you, Dick, do you know Jesus, your Lord and Savior? Yes. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings upon us that we can take this word of your soon second coming. It could be 500 years from now. Nobody knows the day there, but it could be five minutes from now. So, Lord, bless this word to our hearts. May we, we bask in its truth and knowledge, and may our minds be changed and transformed and go from this day from glory to glory. In Jesus' precious name, amen, amen. and amen. amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Get ready whenever he comes. He's coming.